Okay, we're out here in uh, Bushwick at Storefront, and it's Halloween night, so we're gonna put Andrew Hurst on the spot. And we're gonna give him five minutes to run through and tell us about his show, Go. All right. You were starting out right here. Starting with Entrance. This is a very recent piece, one of the last ones that I did, but one of the first ones that I started that I knew Look was Look at that, be, folks, it's got a red dot on it, too. But it was good. I knew that it was gonna be in the show from 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 the moment that I found some of you got trigger treaters right. showing up <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you about your aesthetic here uh, what you know the use of assemblage and stuff like that are you uh, influenced at all by say maybe the California funk artists or some of the uh, New York uh, assemblage people both I would maybe say Rauschenberg and some of those people both for sure Rauschenberg is somebody who I grappled with I think a little bit more when I was younger um, didn't we all and so, yeah, well, in terms of uh, finding sort of the um, the negotiation between like should it be on the wall or should it be a sculpture, sort of work through that, and maybe the West Coast people led me to embrace some of the traditionalism of just doing a wall work and committing to a wall work that doesn't necessarily come out from the wall and and engage the floor or anything. People on the West Coast like Wallace Berman, um, very specifically, somebody like him. Um, embracing traditionalism and, and getting in touch with that side of yourself as a way to really celebrate texture and celebrate um, this sort of sweetness of the material so you can really see what's happening and you can feel the nuance and you can be seduced by the simplicity of it and having its uh, uh, sort of original beauty now you very much there. You also do work with music and performance and stuff like that. How does that uh, inform your work as a uh as a visual artist. It does in a way oh, that... This piece is titled Untitled. <laughs> I would say with the music, I, the way that it relates is I, I work with materials the same way. Most of the in instruments or the um, sound devices that I use in my music are things that people gave to me or things that I found. It's not a situation where I'm upgrading my equipment or um, I'm tuning my strings properly. It comes more from like a purity of expression where the quality of the instruments or where they come from is secondary to the expression. And that is very much a guiding principle in the music. Having said that, it doesn't have to be something broken or something that I found on the street. But I just feel like my voice comes through easier when I'm less intimidated about um, some sort of technological issue or something that derives from the the purest point of the expression, and the further you get away from that, the easier it is to screw it all up. This is titled Peel Sessions. <laughs> that's Talking about that, things found in the street. Yeah, well, uh, that's an overt musical reference as well. Um, inside of this, not a lot, not many people know this, but this is actually me. Oops. This is actually me here as a 22 year old person uh, standing next to my last side. year, right? 70 Dodge Dart. <laughs> Um, so it has a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a allegiance and uh, reverence for I think you know car culture obviously, but but I'm in there too in my personal wall and that. Um, okay, let's move up this side here. We're getting oh, you got a minute and a half. Let's speed it up. Well, <laughs> this was this was actually the last one that I did for the show, um, so it's probably the new, technically the newest piece. Oh, I got another red dot there. This is a celebration of texture, and I would probably say probably Eastern patterns too. Um, now you also use uh, photography in a lot of the pieces. Do you uh, take take the photographs and print them yourself, or do you find the photographs? What is your relationship with photography? I would say both. I do definitely do both. I'm moving more towards engineering the uh, photography and doing it all on my own. Um, I think that's something that's uh, gonna be a stronger presence. You know, because when you're talking about texture, you also have uh, photographs of texture and things like that that kind of play off against the real texture. It's uh, kind of an interesting uh, dialogue. Okay, let's wrap up on this piece. I did love your the flat boots up here. Those I found on Knickerbocker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for those of you not living in Brooklyn, that's a big street here in the neighborhood. 
And this is actually the tongue that was inside of the boot. So when I took it off the street, that tongue just sort of fell down like that. And I loved the shape of it. So I knew that, that I was going to use it that way. I didn't know what the other things that were going to be in there. But as a guide and form, that was one of the principal catalysts to set up this structurally. And I love the breakdown of the texture there that I think you can only get from it being something that somebody actually wore. And the sweat. Maybe rain on, yeah. on top of that, you know. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Kate.